Hello and welcome to WMBS Live. Thank you so much for joining our class tonight. You can join us every Wednesday night from 7 to 7.30. By the way, at WMBSLive.com. But remember, all of our programs are archived, so never miss your home congregation Bible study. This program is brought to you by the Tri-City School of Preaching and Christian Development, overseen by the elders of the Stony Creek Church of Christ in Elizabethan, Tennessee. Our class tonight is on Galatians. And now, let's join our class. I'd like to welcome everyone to our class. I'd like to welcome our class to the class. Appreciate the presence of everyone. Good to be here. Before we get started in the book of Galatians, dealing with the fruit of the Spirit, we've got a, just a few announcements to make. Make sure to listen to the Arise to Truth radio program that comes on every Tuesday and Thursday from 2 to 3 p.m. It's on WZAP 690 AM out of Bristol, Virginia. The phone number, it's a live call-in program. The phone number is 423-512-9226. That's 423-512-9226. And also, our class on the book of Amos. Don't forget about that on Thursday night. We started last week studying the book of Amos. And we will start probably in chapter 1. Uh, tomorrow night, if nothing don't happen, that class is, starts at 7 p.m. It doesn't matter if you missed the first class because we have the classes taped. And you might ask, well, what is the cost of the class? The class is absolutely free. And we appreciate We had a great cl uh, crowd there, great class uh, last Thursday. I believe we counted about 15 students. 16 if you count me. But uh, great to have all the students and if you can attend we sure would appreciate it the phone number for more information is 423-474-2622 423-474-2622 once again the tuition is free all right tonight we're going to continue our study dealing with the fruit of the spirit from galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 and i'm going to start here at verse 22 it says here, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Now, we've already discussed love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Tonight we're going to take a look at meekness. Now, a lot of people have the wrong idea when it comes to meekness. They think that meekness is just someone that walks around and basically what you say like with their tail tucked between their legs and uh, they have no backbone about them. Well, that's not meekness. Or someone gets up to pray and they pray and you can just barely hear them talk. Well, that's not meekness. Matter of fact, I mean, if I can't hear you pray, how in the world can I say amen to your prayer? That is not meekness. Meekness is simply strength under control. That's the idea of meekness. It's just, I just want you just to think about this here, dealing with meekness. Just think about a wild Mustang horse that is taken and tamed, but without having his spirit broken. That horse still has the same power and strength, but it's now under control. That's meekness. I watched a program uh, the other day of where this man was trying to tame a wild Mustang. Well, that Mustang, it had power. It threw him numerous times and, and drug him through the dirt until finally the Mustang was tamed. Well, that's meekness. Well, that Mustang still had that same power and ability to throw that man all over the place and to drag him all over the uh, place. But it didn't because now this Mustang is gentle. It's tame, it's ready for riding, ready to do the work that he needed it uh, to do. Basically, it don't abuse the powers it's been given. Oh, that's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, you can just see that's, that's the idea of true meekness. True meekness. We've got to understand that from uh, the Bible perspective. Now, we're going to take a look at some people who were meek. The first one that 
we must mention is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Here the Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So here the Lord says, for I am meek and lowly. Now, lo and behold, he was the lamb that took away the sin of the world, but also he was the lion of the tribe of Judah. So here our Lord's meek. Matter of fact, uh, in Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 5, Tell you the daughter of Zion, behold, the king cometh unto thee meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. So here comes Jesus making his triumphant entry, uh, entry into Jerusalem. And here he is meek and lowly. That's what the Bible teaches about Jesus Christ. Any comments dealing with meekness? You know, Tim, while, while you were given the definition for meekness, I wrote one down on the back of my paper. The spiritual strength and courage to humble oneself to obey God. Now when you think about Jesus Christ, that's exactly what he had. The spiritual strength and courage to humble himself to obey his heavenly father. Now we know that meekness does not mean weakness. Mm -hmm. He went into the temple twice, turned the tables over. He sure did. He wasn't afraid of those people. Not at all. And then look at him in Matthew 23. Stand up to the leaders of that day and address the scribes, lawyers, Pharisees, called them hypocrites and told them exactly what they were, whited sepulchers and so forth. He asked them, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? He asked them that twice, as I recall, in that chapter. Now you think about that. Here is a man with a backbone. Here is a man with awesome courage, awesome strength, but yet he had meekness to its greatest degree. That's exactly right. Matter of fact, he even told the uh, Sadducees, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Now, someone will say, well, that's not meek. That was meek. That's right. That was very meek. And to try to say that Jesus Christ was not meek, even there, during the uh, two times we were over through the uh, table of the money changers, is to misrepresent Jesus Christ. He was, my, the, he was the most... Go ahead, Vicki. My uh, program on my phone, I looked it up while we were sitting here doing that too, and it says overly, overly submissive as one of the definitions for meekness. Yeah, well, see, you, you take the, you know, the idea of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, you take yeah. the idea of the... I mean, that's just like when the man broke that, that Mustang. Uh, that was... Basically, a, a pet. I mean, he could do anything with that horse now. And, you know, you think about Jesus Christ. Put up uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. This right here is true meekness, like Wesley pointed out, dealing with Jesus Christ. Uh, don't you like to read those scriptures there for us? Yeah, verse 8 and 9. Yes. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Yeah, watch his meekness. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience. See, he had to learn obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So he led the way. He showed the great example of meekness. And even while he was even tempted uh, of the devil, here he is. Hungry, according to verse 2 of Matthew chapter 4. So here he is hungry. And here the devil says, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Boy, that could have been really easy for him to say, Yeah, I'm hungry. But watch his meekness here. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. See, he didn't fall for that temptation because of his great meekness. Then the, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple, 
saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angel charge concerning thee, and in thy hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Now watch his meekness. Jesus saith unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Now watch his submissive attitude here. Watch his meekness. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now lo and behold, here it says here, Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Another uh, over in, I believe it's the book of Luke, said that uh, he just left him for a season. So you just think about that. And it all did, uh, and it all stems on his great meekness. Now, over in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1, it says, now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. Here even the Apostle Paul talks about the meekness of Jesus Christ. Now, I remember when we were doing the Ecclesiastes in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, I read that verse there and Wesley said, I believe Paul there is using sarcasm, Tim. Well, yeah, he is that last highest part right there. But here he's saying, Now, I bes uh, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. So, once again, Jesus Christ gives us a great example of one who is meek. True meekness. Now, can you think of somebody in the Old Testament that the Bible says that they were meek? Moses. Yeah. yeah, Moses. Moses. The Bible talks about Moses. As a matter of fact, Moses is the human penman of the book of Numbers. Well, someone might say, well, how in the world can that be meekness there? And him writing down what he did here about, him, uh, about himself. No, he was led by the Holy Spirit to pen that. That's God's take on Moses. That's God's take on Moses. Now, Tim, think about Moses being the meekest man upon the face of the earth. And him going and facing Pharaoh like he did. And telling Pharaoh, you got to let God's children go. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, there will be consequences. And he went back time and time again and faced him until finally Pharaoh decided to let him go. And then out in the wilderness, when Korah chose to rise up against God's leadership, Moses, with great courage, stood. And yet the Bible says he was a meek man. Yes. When the children of Israel did that which was wrong, he stood against them. And so one can take a stand and be meek. And a lot of people think somebody real meek, you know, just... I wouldn't dare lift a hand to hurt anybody or do this or rebuke anybody. Well, that's not meekness. No. no. Meekness is having the spiritual strength and courage to humble oneself and be submissive to God. Oh, yeah. That's what true biblical meekness is. Now, let me tell you this, too. One thing I love about the Godhead, they don't ask us to do anything they themselves will not do. Jesus prayed forgive your enemies, then he tells us to forgive ours. Jesus tells us to take up our cross, follow him, he took up his cross. Jesus tells us to be meek, he's meek. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells us to love our enemies, he loved his enemies. And so the beautiful thing about the Godhead is that they're not going to ask us to do anything that they themselves would not do. And that's the beautiful thing. We, we take on then, when we respond correctly, the divine nature. We start to look more and more like the Godhead with our attitude, our disposition, and our lives. Rather than taking on the human nature, if you slap me, I slap you back. But 
The divine nature is turning the other cheek. Yeah. If you talk about me, I'll talk about you. The divine nature is to pray for those that do that. See, we've got to learn to act and respond the way the Godhead wants us to act and respond. That's exactly right. And uh, put up Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. We'll get Howard to read that for us. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. All right. Even though Moses here is the human kinman, that's God's take on Moses. That's God's take on Moses. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Matter of fact, uh, just to show from this context right here what, what it's dealing with, uh, Miriam and Aaron are a little bit put out at Moses because basically uh, they're thinking, well, what about us? You know, instead of thinking, you know, what, what about the you know, children of Israel? They uh, was thinking that Moses was taking all the glory. And that was not the case. And in this context here, Moses, or, uh, Miriam is uh, smote with leprosy. She's out of the camp for seven days because of what took place there. Because Miriam and Aaron did not have a meek attitude, and Moses did. Think about that, Tim. Aaron's the high priest. Mm -hmm. And yet Moses is more meek than he. Well, when you start to think about it, you look at, back at their lives. While Moses was up trying to receive the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments, at the base of the mountain, you got Aaron failing to have spiritual strength, spiritual courage, enough to humble oneself and do what God wants. And what does he do? He makes a golden calf. He's down there doing that. When Moses comes down, it burns him up. He throws the commandments down and breaks them. And then there's a great penalty to be paid. Thousands died because of what Aaron helped lead them to do. And so you can see that Moses had the kind of spiritual strength and courage that was needed to be a leader and to be truly meek. Yeah, and Aaron there, if he, he, lacked, he lacked meekness. And if he had been truly meek, like Moses, he would have said, no, no golden calf, we're going to obey God. That's right. And, and say supposedly if they would have went on, you know, he could have said this, all right, I'm still going to obey God. If you want to be disobedient, that's up to you, but you'll pay the price. That's right. And he'd have been uh, meek just like uh, Moses. And the world a lot of times views meekness as like what Aaron did, gave in to the people. Yeah, that's yeah. That's the way a lot of people view it. Yeah, yeah, they, they were no doubt looking probably, you know, at, at Aaron thinking, well, he's meek. He's going to let us do what uh, we want to do. That's, that's true meekness. No, that's meekness of the world, not meekness of the Bible. That's like Wesley said, meekness of the Bible is standing up. That's just like uh, chapters 13 and 14 of the book of Numbers, uh, dealing with the uh, spies that come back. Well, two give a good report. The other ten give a bad report dealing with the land, and there you have Joshua and Caleb standing up against the other ten. Someone might say, well, those ten, they showed real, they showed real meekness. No, they didn't, they didn't show meekness. They showed that they were a bunch of cowards and didn't put their trust in God where Joshua and Caleb showed true meekness. And all the way through the book of Numbers, you, know, you can just see uh, Moses' great attitude. Uh, in Psalm 147, verse 6, Psalm 147, verse 6, the Bible says, The Lord lifteth up the meek, he casteth the wicked down to the ground. So here the Lord, he's the one, he lifts up the meek. And look what happens to the wicked. The wicked are cast down to the ground. Psalm 149, verse 4 says, For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. So here the Lord's going to beautify the meek with salvation. So we better learn to be meek. 
We better learn to humble ourselves. Tim, notice in Psalm 147, verse 6, the Bible says the Lord lifteth up the meek. That's one class of people. Mm -hmm. He casteth down the wicked. So then we have a choice. We can either be meek or be wicked. Now that's what this amounts to. Yes. Because being meek again means to have the spiritual strength to humble oneself and have the courage to do what God says do. Now, if we don't do that, then we fall into the category of the wicked. Then the next verse, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek. Well, how in the world do you beautify the meek? You grant to them salvation because they chose to have the spiritual strength and courage to humble themselves to keep the very commandments of the Most High God. Yeah, that's exactly right. And like, like you said, to stand, stand for that, which is right, like Moses did, right. like uh, Joshua and Caleb, what they did, and others of uh, Old Testament times and also New Testament times. Uh, in Isaiah 29, 19, uh, put that on the board and we'll let Ryan read that one. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. All right. Notice here, the meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. Notice it's because of that, as Wesley pointed out, that spiritual strength, that they have, that courage. They're going to increase their joy in the Lord. And that's, that's the same idea when you take a look at uh, Galatians chapter 5. Here you got that meekness there. They mentioned in Galatians chapter 5, dealing with meekness, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. You keep on, you know, to the greatest uh, ability that you possibly can, dealing with meekness. There's no law against that. And that's the way that God want, wants it to happen. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. Uh, Amos chapter 2 and verse 7. I had to put that one in there. I'll let Vicki read that one, Amos chapter 2, verse 7. That pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor, and turn aside the way of the meek, and the man and his father will go in unto the same maid to, prevent, to profane my holy name. All right. And, of course, this is dealing with uh, uh, Israel here in this context uh, for three score transgressions of Israel and for four. Uh, here he's dealing with Israel, that pant for the dust of of the earth on the head of the poor of course they didn't care anything for the poor and turn aside the way of the meek now not only that and a man and his father will go into the same maid to profane my holy name so notice here and turn aside the way of the meek they don't like how the meek are acting no doubt there might have been someone and, and Amos would have uh, fallen into the category as a man that was meek that stood up and went in there and told him, hey, you're in sin. But but here, here's someone that's meek. They're obeying God. And the ungodly just don't like that. They're trying to turn away. They're trying to turn aside the way of the meek. They care nothing at all uh, for, for their way. Any comment dealing with Amos 2-7? Yeah, Tim, I want you to notice that when one fails to be meek, given what this verse says, he mistreats his fellow man. Mm -hmm. That's See, right. He's not right with his fellow man. Then he also mistreats God, so he profanes God's holy name. And of course, that gets back to the two greatest commandments. That we're to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. The second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, if I'm going to be meek, I've got to put those into practice. Mm -hmm. If not, then I'm going to wrong my fellow man, and I'm going to wrong God, and thus I'm going to be lost come judgment day. Yeah, and say supposedly here's this, uh, uh, and a man and his father. Let's say both the man and his father, they go around and they're just, you know, they're just so humble, they act so humble. 
Well, look what they're doing. That's not meekness. No, that's right. That is not meekness. Yeah. Jim, I want to make a comment on that to show you. See, a lot of people think meekness is just being so gentle. Mm -hmm. So kind. Well, if we go back up to a verse a moment ago that you read 2 Corinthians 10, verse number 1, notice what Paul says. Now, I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness, that's one thing, mm -hmm. and gentleness, that's another thing, of Christ. Now, Christ had meekness, courage, and strength, the spiritual courage and strength to stand for what was right, but he did it with gentleness. See, gentleness is one thing. Meekness is something else. That's exactly right. And a lot of people, they, they miss that. And we might need to make sure that we don't miss uh, the idea of, of true meekness. And uh, what's so sad is you got some of these people, uh, they always talk about love, love, love. you got to have love. Well, most definitely you got to have love, but you must have true biblical love. Matter of fact, that was one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, fruit of the spirit here. Uh, that the fruit of the spirit is love. And what is so sad is some of these people that they'll holler this, and they're the most vicious people that you ever will, will see. They'll come after you. Here you are, you know, trying to show them a, a Bible truth, and they'll just just come at you, just real vicious like. While you're trying to show them true meekness. They got what we call a pseudo meekness. It's not a true. It's not a true meekness. And like Wesley said, and Wesley, that's a great point here with Amos chapter two, and verse number seven. True meekness. You're going to love your neighbor, and you're going to love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and be submissive to His will. You're always going to strive to do what's right. Yeah. You have a meek spirit. You're going. I mean. If everybody in the world practiced that one trade, think how much better the world would be. Oh, yeah, that's exactly right. You know, he was talking about uh, here's a man that he's getting ready to uh, punch his neighbor. You know, here's here's a man, he, he punches you, and the idea is you turn the other cheek instead of taking a strike. That right there takes strength to hold back. So, uh, you know, that right there is true meekness. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5, we'll let uh, Hannah, do you want to read Matthew 5 5? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Alrighty. So who's going to inherit the earth? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, lo and behold, I believe that's the idea of they shall inherit the earth spiritually. A meek person who's who's out there striving to do the very best they possibly can do. They got that strength under control. They're the ones actually in control, not the person that's out of control. You know, they're the one that's in control. That's why the Bible says they shall inherit the earth. Yeah, think about this too, also. That the meek are going to inherit the earth. Well, spiritually, God has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Second. Peter 1, verse number 3. And all spiritual blessings are in Christ. Ephesians 1, and verse number 3. That being true, even the very design of the universe was basically set up for God to use it to bless mankind. Now think about it. When you look at Matthew 6, beginning with verse 25, the Lord warns, don't worry about your food, don't worry about your clothing. Don't I take care of the fowl of the air? Don't I do that? And even Solomon, when he is arrayed in all of his glory, was not arrayed like these that I take care of. So with that in mind, he says this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, material things, shall be added unto you. You be meek. You obey me. I'll give you the rest of it. I'll throw that in the boot. Just because you, you're you serving me, I'll let you inherit the earth. And then speaking of doing good to people, as we therefore have an opportunity, let us do good unto all men, but especially 
to those who are of the household of faith. What are you saying, Lord? Humble yourself. Be a faithful child of God. And I'll see to it you're taken care of. So, yes, you're right. Both spiritually and physically, the meek inherit the earth. Yeah. Then, then you got 1 Peter 3, verse 4. Uh, we'll let Vicki read that scripture. 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 4. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. Okay. Now, getting to that context, put up uh, 1 Peter 3, verse uh, 1 up there. We're going to take a look at this context and see what it's talking about and show how important being meek truly is. It says, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. That's the manner of life by the, by the wives. Here's a, uh, a lady who is a Christian married to one who is a non-Christian. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. Now here's the verse that Vicky read. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. Notice that meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So it's something very valuable to one. And it's very valuable to God that you have that meek and quiet spirit. Tim, it's like uh, this man that owned a beer joint, and this was told for a true story. And he despised Christianity. And every time they'd have a gospel meeting, they'd invite him. He wasn't going to go. But he had a wife that was a great Christian lady. And she'd be over there reading Bible stories to her children. He'd be making fun of the Bible story. Y'all going to believe that? You going to believe a big fish swallowed a man? Three days later, spit him up? Is that, is that what you believe? You believe water fell out of the sky and come up from the ground and flooded the whole earth. You know, he'd do stuff like that. Tears would come down her face and she'd just keep reading, keep telling the story, wouldn't argue with him. And before she got ready to go to bed or whatever, she'd say, hon, is there anything at all I can get for you? I'd be glad to do anything for you I can do. And she is just as sweet to him as she could be. Well, one day they had a gospel meeting and he came to the meeting. Everybody was shocked. When the invitation was extended, here he came. And they asked him on the front pew, what in the world has changed your heart and your mind? And what about that beer joint? He said, oh, I've boarded up the windows and the doors. That thing's closed. And said, well, what has brought you to this point? said, I did everything I could to destroy the faith of my wife. I was mean to her. I mistreated her. And she, with great spiritual courage and strength, continued to stand where she should have stood and had the greatest peace of mind I've ever seen anybody have, treated me with the greatest degree of kindness. And he said, I'm here to get what she got. I want that. Now that's true meekness. Yes, that's exactly right. And that is First Peter chapter three. That's that's right. That's exactly right. Now let's uh, let me drop down here. Let's uh, put on the board Galatians chapter six and verse one, and we'll let Ro uh, Logan uh, read Galatians six and verse one. I want to get this before we run out of time, brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault. Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. All right, appreciate that, Logan. Now notice, chapter 5, you're dealing with the fruit of the Spirit, and you got meekness mentioned in verse 23. Uh, 
Then in chapter 6, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. So here you've got to handle this situation with the right attitude because a soul is at stake. It's very important. You've got a soul here at stake. And you're dealing with a man. It's a, it's a brother. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, if you deem yourself spiritual, you need to do something to try to help restore this soul. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. So you got to do it with the right attitude, with you know your strength under control here, with the, the right spiritual attitude. Why? Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. There could come a time in your life to where you might need this man. If, if this man's restored, there might come a time in your life where you might need this man in the spirit of meekness to come to you to try to uh, help you out. That's right. So these, these things are very important. Wesley, you want to make some comments on this yeah. verse right here? A person cannot have meekness relative to an earned brother if he doesn't, first of all, have the spiritual strength and courage with humility to obey God to go talk to that person and try to restore him. See, he's got to do that to be faithful to God. He's got to do that to treat his fellow man the right way. So there's meekness mm -hmm. in doing what God says. Yeah. yeah. Someone might say, well, I just don't know what to say to him. Well, here's the opportunity to learn. If you're going to do it God's way, here's the opportunity. You know, you could always uh, tell him, say, we miss you. You need to think about your soul. You know, what has caused you, you know, talk to them, sit them down, talk to them. What has caused you to, you know, to take this path to, to, to her? You know, you do it in, you know, with the right frame of mind. And, and if I deem myself spiritual, and there's someone out there that's in error, here's a brother or sister in Christ that's in error, I better with that spirit of meekness try to restore that, restore that one. If not, how in the world can I have true meekness? That's right. How can I say that I have true spirituality? That's right. So that's uh, something very important right there. Tim, in uh, Colossians 3.12, which you have on the paper, shows that meekness is one thing. Kindness, humbleness of mind, and long-suffering are different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. And... Uh, from uh, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2, verses 24 and 25. I had this on here. And it says, And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. Now in verse 25 it says, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of truth. So here, as a servant of the Lord... Uh, I must not strive, but to be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. i got to do that in meekness. I mean, here's someone that might be a false teacher. I need to, in meekness, try to help that person. Try to show them God's Word and, and do it in, in the right type of manner. Well, we've run out of time. Michael has signaled that we only got a minute to go, but uh, this right here, dealing with meekness, it's, it's a wonderful study. And uh, just get you a, uh, a Bible program and just look up the word meekness and, or meek and see how many times it's found and see, uh, see the context and how it's used and it will help you in your studies. Now, it might be the case that you're out there and you're not a child of God. We... Give God's gospel plan of salvation. And if you're going to have true meekness, you're going to submit to God's gospel plan of salvation. That you hear His word. Romans 10 and verse 17. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John 8 verse 24. That you repent of your sins. Luke 13, 3 and verse 5. You make that good confession. Matthew 10, 32, 33. And you're baptized. 
Mark 16, 16, the Lord will add you to his church, Acts 2, 47. And then you must continue to remain faithful, Revelation 2, 10, and 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58. And for the erring child of God, you need to repent and pray that the thaw of thine heart may be forgiven, the Acts 8, verse 22. Well, join us next week as we continue to study the greatest of all books, the inerrant, inspired, perfect will of God.